Hello Horror Hounds. Aside from the fantastic interaction with you guys, uh, this video today is one of the reasons I'm glad I started up this channel and glad I'm continuing it. We've got a sort of theme month going on in September, Wax Museums. We've already looked at the phenomenal Vincent Price movie from 1953, the 3D Blu-ray of which is superb. It's, it's instantly become one of my favorite 3D movies of all time. We've had a little look back at 2005's House of Wax, not a remake, uh, the one with Paris Hilton in it, uh, and found that that was a hell of a lot more enjoyable than I, I, I thought it was gonna be, than I remembered it being. So we're on a two for two batting average now. And this is just a, this is just a pure uh, joy, to be honest. I was uh, dibbling around uh, looking for other Waxwork movies that I could include, trying to get hold of a copy of Waxwork 2. Naturally, I've got Waxwork. I'm not mad. Uh, so that, that will be in it. But it was only after uh, checking out this DVD. I think there's the trailer must have been on here or something for Waxwork 2. I didn't even know there was a Waxwork 2, so I'm getting a US DVD of that, so I'll try and find a way to watch. But anyway, I'm rambling. I came across a movie that I didn't know existed called The Wax Mask. And you can imagine uh, how big my eyes got when I read that it's, the, it's a collaboration between Dario Argento and Lucio Fulci. And my mind was made up at that point. I didn't care how bad the film was. I had to see it. I've scoured around YouTube to see if there's a, maybe a version on here I can link to. There's a version of the movie in Hindi that I'll be able to link to uh, down below, which might actually be quite a compelling and unique watch. You don't... God love him, Fulci's dialogue in this is, is, is not the greatest. Or perhaps whoever translated the dialogue did the opposite of whatever polishing it was. So I suspect you're not going to miss too much if you actually don't watch the film in your native language. Uh, maybe a, maybe a, a couple of little uh, subtexts and things here or there. But... Uh, Honestly, English language or no, I think your bad dubbing in English is, is is part of the joy of Italian horror cinema, and this is this is bad, bad dubbing. Some of the worst I've ever come across. The dialogue is atrocious. <laughs> A lot of the acting is wooden, or should I say, waxen. Uh, but depending on depending on what affection you've got for Italian horror cinema that's <laughs> this is not necessarily uh, going to put you off it might actually endear you to the movie more if if you're after if you're after top notch really well made and really well executed films where every department's working at the top of their game <laughs> including the acting then maybe italian horror cinema as a whole is is, is not for you if you developed a, a, a fondness awful uh, dubbing, awful uh, acting, nonsensical plots, uh, shocking dialogue, glorious uh, visuals, over-the-top violence and gore with just a soupçon of nudity and you're not coming into it expecting the entire plot to make sense going out of it, then the wax mask baby, Argento, Fulci, doing uh, doing the Italian horror version of House of Wax. It's, it's basically as amazing as that sounds. If you think that doesn't sound amazing, then fine, really, by the way. If you love the gonzo, bonkers nature of Italian horror cinema, uh, this is it. It's not, it's not the best version of it it's not the worst version of it but it is it and there's a there's a statement you can take to the back this is this it is it before we get into the movie itself i find the providence of this movie absolutely fascinating i hope you do too otherwise this next little bit's going to be boring 
It's um, sorry, it just is. Um, there's it's credited uh, a sto uh, to be based on a story by um, Gaston Leroux, the man that wrote uh, the Phantom of the Opera, and. What really intrigues me is that the, the internet, usually this vast resource of all knowledge, has, has coughed up almost no information on this, uh, on this uh, supposed short story of Gaston Leroux called The Wax Museum. Uh, all I've been able to find, there, there, there are articles written by, by people who sound like they've read it and things like that. There's, there's, there's sort of a reference to a character who spends the night in a wax museum, and that isn't a particularly good idea for them and certainly a character in this at the start is, is takes on a dare to spend a night in the wax museum. Um, I've looked on Amazon to see if I can find any collection of Gaston's uh, works that I could buy that might have the story in it uh, and uh, with uh, not not really not 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 with, with any kind of uh, certainty say that there are. I don't even know if it's being translated into English. I don't know what the story is about except it's called the Wax Museum. So it could be that this whole run of films, 1933's Mystery at the Wax Museum, which was remade as Vincent Price's The House of Wax, and all of these could have been inspired by Gaston's work and just went uncredited. It would be kind of ironic if, if it was an Argento project uh, that would be the first one to correctly give story credits to someone. Uh, so there's this, there's this weird little mystery as to whether uh, we, can, we can thank um, uh, this uh, French author for, for, for all these waxworks or not. I just, I, I simply don't know. What I do know about this film is that it was intended by Dario Argento as an olive branch to Lucio Fulci. They had a strained and fractious relationship as has been documented uh, and the idea was that uh, I think Fulci was, was having difficulty getting projects off the ground. I think he moved to do a lot of TV projects. The budgets were shrinking. This is now something that Dario himself is, 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 has become victim to. Um, but uh, Argento would, would produce the movie. He's come up with the story idea, uh, uh, ad ad adapted uh, the short story. Uh, Lucio Fulci would write the script and direct it. Fulci uh, completes the script, but sadly passes away before he can direct it. Uh, but the project doesn't die. The director's chair, not Argento himself, but uh, a gentleman called uh, Sergio uh, Stivaletti. Uh, before then, a special effects guy had done special effects on a lot of Argento's movies and others. And this isn't unheard of. Tom, Tom Savini's been behind the camera. He did, uh, he did his version of Night of the Living Dead, Stan Winston. Uh, debuted directorially with Pumpkinhead, otherwise sometimes known as Vengeance the Demon. This is, uh, in, in that mould, this is, this is very much, you can tell that it's a movie directed by a guy who knows and understands special effects. It's kind of all about getting to the next sort of special effects bit, or, or at a push, either the next special effects bit or the next bare breasts bit. It's, it's quite obvious that the guy's worked with Argento. He's got a very fluid camera in, in exactly the same way Argento does. It's obviously not Argento's eye, but the camera moves around very freely. It's a very definite POV that puts the viewer into a sort of stalker, stalky relationship with what it's focused on. Uh, at the same time, mixed with uh, a script by Lucio Fulci that is uh, shot through with Fulci's a seeming obsession with uh, perversions in, in, in the Freudian sense, sexual per, sexual uh, perversions, sort of in a, in a clinical sense, rather than casting aspersions. Um, so it's quite a strange little mix. <laughs> it's, it's a sort of functional, at times really 
lush looking as you would expect from Italian horror cinema, poorly acted, badly dubbed uh, movie with a nice directorial eye, uh, shot through with instances of FX gore, uh, also with a seam running through it of uh, Fulci's proclivity for uh, female nudity and sort of sexual perversions. It's, it's quite a heady mix. I don't want to give, uh, give make you think that it's it's some work of art. I would I would maybe on a par with if you've seen the Phantom of the Opera that's got Robert England in it that stars Robert England. It's a weird. I'm just gonna have to come out and say it. Uh, among uh, amongst the, the voyeurism and uh, and the naked women sort of being chained. Uh, shackled down and things that you you would kind of expect with Fulci anyway there's this weird sort of undercurrent of paedophilia that you just you can't get away from maybe it's watching it now in the in the in the 21st century um, but there's uh, there are a couple of child victims uh, and there's there's no getting away from the fact that one of them is lured away, or a young boy is lured away by an adult with, with the promise of uh, well, candy floss in this instance, sweets, candy. Uh, another uh, girl is uh, a young girl is attacked, and there's there's it not that. It's, uh, 13 sort of pu pubescent slightly prepubescent uh and she's she's naked on an autopsy slab and then there's <laughs> there's 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 a grown-up character who was abused as a child beaten who now likes to be likes to be beaten himself by the ladies of the night that he visits and uh, I'm trying to be vague, but there's no point being vague, really. Uh, the the head of the so spoilers. The guy that runs the wax museum becomes sort of obsessed with a woman who he gives a job to, uh, uh, and kind of sexually obsessed with her. But she might be his daughter, and it, it, it seems that he uh, by the end it seems that he knows that she might be anyway. So there's this weird incestual taboo and, and paedophilic taboo even though she's fully grown by this point but it's just it's bizarre we, we'll we'll move on but it, it it's there okay the movie's made in 1997 but by now uh sort of wax museums are, are passive they're not a thing so this is this is very wisely period set uh the the prologue kicks off uh just on the cusp of uh, the new year 1900 in paris then we move sort of 12 years later so it's it's in the early 1900s so you've got this wonderful period look and uh the director makes makes absolute best use of of italy as a setting and the buildings and the interiors as you would expect when you why why build sets and why dress sets when they exist here in this wonderful country um and then you've got uh, you've got the wax You've got the waxworks themselves. The exterior is a huge grand building, but the wax museum itself seems to be a corridor. Uh, the, the real innovation here is na naturally the waxworks are incredibly lifelike and, and, and naturally they look like people that have started to go missing, you know, as, as, is, as is the theme, as, is, as this is what we want from our wax museum horror movies. Why, they're incredibly lifelike and if this looks just like that person that went missing. Uh, the uh, the nice twist here is that they're sort of animatronic waxworks. They they move uh, and uh, they're also sort of maybe maybe still alive. Um, there's a there's a weird sort of preservation of life thing going on. He's not just obsessed with with with, with his waxwork displays. There's a sort of bizarre preservation of life thing that sort of <laughs> go, go just really goes off a fucking cliff at the end when uh, he is revealed to be um, going, do you want to know? <laughs> okay. If you, do, if you don't want to know the 
fucking insane ending, then then turn off now and just just know that if you're a lover of Italian horror, uh, then then there's much to like about this and you will enjoy it. If you want to stick around to know how it ends, then I'm going to tell you in five, four, uh, three, two, one, zero. You know that bit at the end of Terminator <laughs> where, <laughs> where, where the where the skeleton uh, <laughs> rises out uh, and sort of Ray Harryhausen and like starts uh, coming after Linda Hamilton. Uh, yeah, uh, he was he was a. Uh, as with as with the, the Vincent Price one, he was he, he was uh, horribly burnt and scarred, but then comes back and ho oh, oh, ho, you know, he, he looks fine. And oh no, it's a wax mask. But yes, more more than that, much much more than that. He's he's got a Terminator skeleton under, <laughs> underneath him, so when all his flesh gets burnt off at the end, he can still move around and he's still got his heart uh, sort of saved there. Um, and uh, it's nonsense. Uh, it's it's glorious, glorious nonsense. But I've I've, I've kind of I've sent people away now, so this has to be the last bit. There's not really that much more uh, to say. I think I've <laughs> I think I've given you the gist of this. I'm going to link to I'm going to link to the movie in Hindi uh, and the trailer in German. I'll see if I can find the trailer in English uh, and. Uh, whatever other wax mask goodies I can find uh, down below. But